Hello everyone, I'm Diptak Bhattacharya. I'm a PhD student in the Colorado School of Mines. The title of my presentation is Compositional Influence on Liquid Metal Embrittlement Susceptibility of Zinc-Coated Advanced High Strength Steels. I would like to thank my advisor, Professor John Spear, and all my industrial mentors from the different automotive and steel companies for their continuous support and guidance in this project. Now, let me first tell you what is liquid metal embrittlement. Now, if we have a zinc coated steel, the zinc coating is on the surface of the steel. If we heat the zinc coated steel to a temperature above the zinc melting temperature, we will have liquid zinc in contact with the solid steel. Now, in that condition, if we simultaneously apply a tensile stress, the liquid zinc from the coating starts to penetrate into the steel via the grain boundaries of the steel, weakening the steel, giving rise to surface cracks. So in the picture to the right, that's a zinc EDS map from a hot tension tested zinc coated specimen that's the coating, that's the steel, and the zinc EDS map tells us the zinc from the coating has penetrated into the steel, so that's an LME crack. Now here is the strength, the clarity of the banana diagram showing the different families of steels, and here are the various researchers that investigated the LME susceptibility of these different steels, and one clear outcome of all these previous researchers has been, they have shown us the recent generations of advanced high strength steels are more LME susceptible compared to the previous generations of steels. Now these recent generations of advanced high strength steels are more heavily alloyed relative to the previous generations of steels. And in this presentation, I'll show you how particularly silicon alloying can influence LME susceptibility. Now we took two zinc coated AHSs, one with a high silicon content, another one with a lower silicon content, carbon and manganese remaining the same. And then we quenched and partitioned both these AHSs to develop a similar microstructure containing martensite and austenite. And then we performed high temperature tension tests in a global thermomechanical simulator using this thermomechanical cycle. I will particularly show you the results from a temperature of 700 degrees C, which is above the zinc melting temperature. And we had a very interesting observation. We saw that the high silicon AHSs had a clear brittle intergranular fracture with large LME cracks that performed in the cross section, whereas the low silicon AHSs clearly suffered a ductile fracture with little to no LME cracks that we observed in the longitudinal cross section. So silicon increases the LME susceptibility of advanced high strength steels, and let's try to understand why. Now, the simple way we think about LME is that we have a zinc coated steel, which when heated to a temperature above the zinc melting temperature, the zinc will melt and liquid zinc will be in contact with the steel so that when we apply a tensile stress, LME will be activated. Now we compared the coating microstructures of the high silicon and the low silicon steel after the hot deformation, and this is what we observe. In the case of the high silicon AHSs, these are backscattered electron images from the coating substrate interface. The only phase that is present in the coating is the solidified liquid zinc. And in the case of the low silicon AHSs, there is solidified liquid zinc on the outer side of the coating, but on the inner side of the coating, right next to the substrate, an Fe zinc intermetallic layer is formed by reaction between the iron and the zinc. So we know what happened. In the case of the high silicon steel, we had liquid zinc in direct contact with the substrate at the elevated temperature so that when we applied a tensile stress, we triggered LME. In the case of the low silicon steel, there was an intermetallic layer between the liquid zinc and the steel substrate, which acted as a barrier from the liquid from entering the substrate. So when we applied a tensile stress, there was no LME that was activated. Now let's try to explain this observation. If we consider the binary Fe zinc phase diagram at a temperature of 700 degrees C on the zinc rich side of the phase diagram, two phases should be in equilibrium liquid and the gamma Fe zinc intermetallic phase. Now, in order to understand the relative stability of the gamma and the liquid phases by the addition of silicon into the system, we have to refer to the Fe zinc silicon ternary phase diagram. Now, if we have a binary Fe zinc alloy and intentionally add silicon to the alloy, then here is the relative phase stability. So on the x-axis is silicon concentration, y-axis is phase fraction. We see that the intermetallic phase amount as we increase the silicon concentration is decreasing with progressive rise in the liquid amount. So silicon addition will destabilize the intermetallic and will increase the stability of the liquid phase. So in conclusion, silicon increases the LME susceptibility of AHSS 
by suppressing Fe zinc intermetallic formation and promoting a direct contact between the liquid zinc and the steel at elevated temperatures. And if you want to read more about our work and some cool tough sims characterization, then please read this paper um, that we recently published. Thank you, everyone.